Hello everyone and welcome to Nanalyze at Dawn. I'm your host Shadow Fury or Dominic, whichever you prefer. And we're going to be having a start up with a 3v3. Bit of a set of newer players here is going to be a match between Briley, Wakfa, and or Kakash JP Productions and Wakfa versus Briley, the Green Squig, and Monte Carlo. This is a request by Briley. So we'll see how that goes in this. Probably the Clickbot Factory, Monte Carlo with gunships. Green, Green Squig not yet chosen what they're going to go for. While on the southwest side, we have light, we have rovers, cloakies, and shields coming in there. A bit of an odd choice since, at this point, they're kind of covering similar ter territory. I mean, JB Productions with the Clickbot Factory that will be able to do a fair bit of raiding, but it looks like that isn't really the concern right now. Southwest team is much more concerned about setting up an economy quickly, getting those workers built up, getting that defense, or at least getting economy, getting the wind generators built up, and I approve of that for sure. I'm always talking about how you need to make sure you have energy in storage, or not energy storage, energy income to spend your metal, and especially in a 3v3 game where you start out with a lot of metal and a lot of constructors compared to the map, so it's, it's really easy to get that metal built up quickly. It's absolutely critical that energy is built up at the same time as so you can spend all that metal. And that's exactly what the Southwest team is doing. The Northeast team, on the other hand, they're working on it. Green Squig is definitely building up a few solar plants, but it's not quite as quickly. So Southwest team will have a slight advantage, especially if combat comes in and we start getting into reclaim territory. At this point, though, it looks like primarily military from Southwest is just defensive. One thug coming out just to make sure that nothing can easily get past them. But again, thugs aren't a particularly fast-firing unit, so it won't be hard for raiders to get in here. And honestly, when it comes to actual defenses, there's not much. There's a Lotus that's being built up in the front lines, and otherwise, nothing else. At the same time, though, aggression is clearly their form of defense as the Southwest team able to take out a Wasp for free. Might be losing this Scorcher in the South to a few bandits, but nope. Just barely. 0.7 HP! Less than 1 HP! Less than 1 HP and the Scorcher stays in the game. It better go back and repair, because there's not much it can do on the front lines. The second Scorcher here, I, it's, it's going down. It had its shot. It did a pretty good job, but at this point, Northeast team should be able to take the Northwest side of the map, no problem. And overall, I'd say the Northwest, uh, the Northeast team, they have managed to take advantage of their aggression. I mean, they did lose a Wasp, which is a pain in the butt, but at this point, the Southwest team is having a bit of a harder time expanding. Now, considering there's these bandits over here, they're going to be coming over to the Western side, and Kakash's commander has nothing really stopped them from killing them. I mean, the picket's coming in there, but there's, that's it. That's really it. And there's a couple of courses nearby that will help. Oh, and the bandits came in a little, okay, they came out of sync. Never mind. This is no problem whatsoever. Those bandits will not be able to get a snipe. If there were four or five of them that were all coming in together, it would have been a good shot, but no, there were not. There was only the, two, only the two at once, and that's not how you do anything in this game, really. You, you generally want to have units reasonably well masked up, otherwise you're going to have them die. And dead units can't actually fight. Oh, I'll put, okay, I'll put the playlist back on. <sighs> People are complaining about the lack of a player list. I mentioned before, I felt like it was hard to get... They had all these names repeated, but it sounds like people want the player list, so... There you go, there's the player list. Anyway, the... That's... I mean, that's why I look at the stream chat, because the stream chat tells me if they want things, and I'm not that picky. I just want to make sure that the stuff looks as good as possible. So anyway, back to the game. We do have... The, we do have Briley actually setting up fairly effectively in the southeast side of the map, or south center side of the map. Glaives here should be able to push forward and actually start harassing a bit, but unfortunately, thanks to that outlaw and the snitch, those glaives will not have a very easy time of doing so. And actually, at this point, I'd say the Southwest team, they aren't expanding that quickly, but they are managing to secure those expansions well. I mean, that's mostly considering the fact that the Northeast team hasn't built a lot in the way of actual assault units. They primarily focus on raiders, and raiders get stuffed by outlaws. They get stuffed by enough defenses. This actually should be okay for the dozen or so glaives to get through, but it'd be a bit of an even match. Kakash's commander, however, has not been upgraded, so there is definitely a chance of moving in there and causing problems. I just don't see that happening immediately. Green Squig, on the other hand, having to deal with JP Productions, and unless Green Squig has upgraded their commander, which they indeed have, with a machine gun on top of that, there is a slight possibility, but with the Scorchers coming in there, that's five Scorchers, that is sniping numbers of Scorchers. If they get anywhere near Green Squig's commanders, Green Squig will not have a commander for much longer. And actually, as it stands, Overall, the Northeast team is just falling behind. They're having a difficult time expanding. The Southeast has been basically taken over by a snitch. The Northwest taken over by the Scorchers. And Southwest is doing a great job pushing in slowly but surely. And I, unless we see the Northeast team switch over to a bit more of an assault-focused strategy or possibly get a few gunships, seeing some harpies being built up, but I'm thinking all the way into Revenants. I don't see much changing here. And now this is where it's really going to become clear as the snitch is going to be going off. These glaives just barely avoiding the snitch. I still expect we're going to see Wakfa come in with that snitch and actually try to take out the glaives, but not immediately. No, this is the perfect time. Those glaives cannot deal with the snitch, but no, the outlet does indeed go down. There are enough glaives. 
that not much is going to stop them. Even the thug, obviously the thug's not going to be able to do much. Really, that was the outlaw's job. And the outlaw having gone down means it's not going to be able to finish it. So this Wakfa commander here, it is done. There is nothing that can save it. There's nothing nearby. Wakfa will lose their commander. Thankfully for them, the Glaze will go down in the process. But still, that's Southwest losing one commander, losing a third of their storage, and losing four metal per second, five energy, or six energy per second. That's not nothing. But at the same time, the Southwest team still has reasonable control. They can get that reclaim going. They're not in the worst of positions, but they are not in a great position. However, at the same time, we have the north side with the Fencers tearing apart the Outlaw, opening up the Green Squig. And again, there are enough Scorchers nearby that the Green Squig could lose their commander in trade. That would still be a reasonable trade. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's still... Or it's not, I mean, the best thing in the world, rather. But hey, is Green Squig losing their commander, especially having upgraded their commander? That is worth it. JP Productions, on the other hand, wow, their cluster bomb on... Sheesh, they have got everything. Cluster Bomb, Flamethrower, bit of an unorthodox upgrade path, but still, they do have a commander that's reasonably combat-worthy. The problem, of course, would be if we had Zeus's coming, or Knights coming in here from Briley, but I don't see any of that. In fact, I don't see really anything at all coming in from Green Squig or Briley to help deal with this, and Monte Carlo primarily seems to be focused on economy. I don't see much other than a handful of Harpies, and those are not going to do the trick here. JP Productions not even worrying about Green Squig's commander, but Monte Carlo is their own commander coming in here. That will be able to hold things off for now. But at the same time, all of these Scorchers here, every single one of these Scorchers belongs to Kakash. And every single one of those Scorchers is going to be able to get rid of Monte Carlo's commander for not quite free. The Scorchers did get killed in the process, but that opens things up. JP Productions is able to freely get in here. The Fencer stopping the Wasps from getting any reclaim. I mean, JP Productions, just get that reclaim. Just get all of this reclaim. It is it's almost a thousand metal reclaim. Just get it. Use that. Get the economic advantage as a result. I mean, Southwest has taken most of the map already, and this is only six minutes into the game. Southwest is in a great spot. They just need to reclaim. If they get that reclaim, they have the energy to make it work. They have the build power. They have the caretakers. They are perfectly set up to take advantage of all of this reclaim. So if we get to see that, we should see JP Productions and the entire Southwest team just take this match almost immediately. But JP Productions is not going for that. And actually, they're having a bit of a hard time. The Kakash is losing their fencers, and that is just kind of surprising. Green Squid got a lot of value off of that outlaw. And that overall means that there's not much in the way of actual assault forces coming in to follow up. The defense coming in from the Northeast is able to hold off, and the Northeast did not lose all that much. They got... It was basically a trade commander. They'd already killed one of the Southwest commanders, so hey, there you go. The Northeast team, they lost a commander, but ultimately leaves them even. Of course, the problem for the Northeast team is they don't have much territory. Most of that is the Southwest team, and it's fairly well defended as well, considering the unit composition being gone for. Although, that being said, we do see... Ooh, the Snitch managing to find a little bit of mileage over in the Southeast, but not much. Actually, no, not anything. The Lotus stopped that completely. However, like I said, there are... Or, I was going to say, there are Reavers. There are Phantoms. There's no Knights, as, I can, as far as I can tell. Just Slings and Glaives. Not a terrible choice. Slings, Glaive, Reaver. That can get past the defenses reasonably well. However, most of the units being brought in are heavier units. I can see the slings working reasonably well. I would rather see Ronin in this situation rather than slings, but it could work. The Reavers, on the other hand, are just going to be torn to pieces by the Outlaws, and that's where the problem arises. However, it could still be fine. I mean, the thing is that Southwest has stopped their assault. They're actually slightly behind in economy, especially as Green Squig has taken full advantage of all this reclaim. None of it was taken by JP Productions. I actually didn't even notice their commander was destroyed. So JP Productions losing their commander, 2,000 metal reclaim available for Green Squig. There is nothing here that is going to work out for Southwest. They've just donated so much to the Northeast. Really, the only thing Northeast is not doing is getting enough of it. Because they have the energy, they have 127 power. They could very easily take all that reclaim right now and have like plus 30, plus 40 metal for a good minute or so. They aren't doing that, but hey, they could very well. And using that to build a crow, not a move I totally agree with, but I can kind of see why. However, what I mostly don't agree with is the fact that these aren't helping out here, and also there aren't more workers trying to reclaim. Because, hey, if you get the reclaim going, you know, get three or four convicts just down here, setting up that reclaim field, that would mean the crow actually gets built in a reasonable amount of time. Still, though, we do see JP Productions fighting a bit of revenge with the Glaives. Actually managed to push back Northeast team again. As long as the contain is maintained by the Southwest team, it should be okay as far as keeping the Southwest team in the lead, more or less. However, given that the Northeast team does have the reclaim, they do have the attrition advantage, and ultimately are just not taking advantage of the reclaim. That's the only thing that's not going well for them. The Southeast team has a reasonable... Or sorry, the Southwest team has a quite reasonable chance of actually winning this. Mainly because they managed to get a lot of momentum early on in the game. That is, as always, huge. Getting territory early on and defending it well is exactly what the Southwest team has done. And to that end, they have done it well. 
The problem, however, is the Northeast team, they do have a Crow built up. They do have a lot of Assault units built up. They have a ton of Reclaim should they choose to take it. Again, a couple Caretakers or a couple Convicts. Something, anything. Just eat this Reclaim, please. I mean, there's still 2,000 metal there. Or 1,700 metal there. It's still plenty. Eat that Reclaim. Make all the money in the world. Make that Crow faster. If you want to make a Crow, you need to have Reclaim because 4,500 metal, that's... Bear in mind, that means at 40 metal per second, everything being pushed into the factory, that is still going to take about two minutes. So it's not its not nothing. It really is worth getting all that Reclaim because that does speed everything up. Granted, there aren't as many Caretakers as would need be to actually make that happen, but still, the more metal there is, the more these Caretakers end up spending less of their money or less of the relative total percentage of the income of the Northeast team onto that Cloaky Bot Factory, the more they get spent onto the Crow, which right now it's only about 10 build power as it is. It's like 13 metal per second being passed into the Crow, so the more metal there is, the better off the Northeast team is, and I'm just going to harp on that for the rest of the game because Reclaim is that important. Like, we're 10 minutes into the game, in a 3v3 game, this is late game, this is the stage of the game where, as it can be clearly seen, the map has been divided. So the only way that any real economic advantage can go one way or the other is either through attrition, which at this point is way in favor of the Southwest team, or reclaim, which the Northeast team has a massive opportunity for. At this point, though, good sights use coming in here from Briley. At the very least, they should be able to get through Kakash's Impalers. That is something. That's not a huge amount, at least providing a bit of room. But the problem, of course, is that once that happens, if Kakash does not manage, or, or sorry, if Kakash does manage to keep those Impalers alive, well, then they're still able to deal with damage, deal with all these bandits, deal with all the thugs, if they can actually hit anything, of course. But that does provide a bit of breathing room for the Northeast team. And again, a lot of this just comes down to get your bloody reclaim! Just uh, reclaim! Oops, wrong one. Reclaim! Ugh. And no one can listen to me back in time. I can't send my commentary back in time to tell you, please reclaim those fields. There's 2,000 metal there, and it's making my soul hurt that it isn't being taken by somebody. Because the Northeast team would have this game. They'd have the Crow by now. They'd have, they'd have had the Crow a minute and a half ago if they had gone for that reclaim. That would have been plenty of time. That would have been enough to just break through everything. Although, given the dummies coming in here from the Southwest team, that could be a problem. Actually, they could lose the Crow just to that. At this point, though, the main problem, again, is that not just the Crow, but the Crow is taking a lot of metal... And there's not, there's all this metal here, and it's not being used, and if it was being used, then there would be an option to get all the things. So you get all the cloakies, all the shields, and get the crow built up. But I mean, once the crow is done, at least that will provide a little bit more room, maybe. There's nothing else planned for Monte Carlo's gunship factory, so at the very least, it will provide that much more metal for the rest of the units, but that's only 13 extra metal. It's not nothing, but again, there's so much room for reclaim, and that is giving everything... This, to the Southwest team. The Southwest team is basically taking this entire game because the Northeast team cannot provide enough units. They can't get Racketeers to set up all, get rid of all the dummies. They can't provide just enough sheer units, like a sheer force of glaives just flooding over here, or bandits flooding over here and overloading the Dominatrices. Because the Dominatrix, it can only capture periodically. Like, it does have a fairly long reload time after its capture, although it doesn't actually display that here. Yeah, it takes a few, a good few seconds. I think it's like 10 seconds to reload after it finishes capturing. So you can just send in a massive force of fodder units and use them. Also, like heavy units also work because heavy units take a lot longer to kill. But if there's enough dominatrices, that doesn't make a difference. However, there's the crow. There's that heavy unit coming in here, trying to prove my point. D gun, drop the D gun. If you drop the special, if you drop the bombs, you should have a chance. Although, again, we're not seeing that either. Regardless, the crow is still managing to do a fair bit of damage. That is enough. But dropping the bombs would help. There we go! There's the bombs! Well done! Although, admittedly, I can kind of see why they weren't, but that'll be fine. It'll re it'll reload in time. Actually, yeah, definitely reload in time. See, the thing with this crow, though, is that it's better you suited here. Or here, actually. Just push right into the main base of the Southwest team and wipe out all their production. However, I do expect fully that the Northeast team is going to be rather timid about using it. Just because, like I said, these are newer players. I mean, I did point that out earlier. The players playing here are newer players, or at least less experienced players, so the fact is the game is going to be probably marked by more timid play. It's going to be marked by less aggressive play. We are seeing the Crow being used, but not as much of a support force, and the fact that the Crow is being built in the first place, not the most surprising thing. In threes, it's not actually that unusual, but it could have been built sooner. However, like I said, there's just kind of a split up of fairly small forces around the map. So I don't expect this to find a whole, this crow rather, to find a whole lot of value, simply because it's not moving in as quickly as it could. Like, it could be in the main base of the Southwest team, destroying everything by now. Very easily. I don't disagree with going along the perimeter and using that as a way of fully securing the forces, 
But you build a crow to win the game, and a good way to win the game, at least at this level, is to get to the main base and start smashing everything. It won't necessarily win the game in all cases, but if you can destroy your opponent's production, and for the very least make sure the crow doesn't stay idle, just moving in here, at the very least that's some value. Because the crow is so powerful, so tough, that it can just get in there and start tearing apart everything with its bombs. And then with its lasers. And at the very least, if all the caretakers die, and a bunch of the energy dies, and the strider hub dies, maybe a factory or two, which the crow can do fairly easily without support. With support, it just win the game, just wipe out the entire base. I could see that, but... Of course, now the crow being idle is not the right call. However, it looks like it looks like Monte Carlo is back on that. So at the very least, that will be used. However, yeah, like I said, definitely a game of newer players, so don't expect the multitasking to be perfect. I certainly am, but that's just my uh, un unrealistic expectations. Actually, that's one thing about 0 K though, is they don't necessarily need multitasking to be perfect, just be comfortable with the Q function. Just, like, have your decisions in mind of what you want to do, Q everything up, and then you're good, but now this crow is going to die. I at least still get rid of a commander in the process. Not totally worth it, though. Yeah, again, that could have moved in sooner. Because the problem is, and I don't want the people playing this to get the wrong lesson. That crow died because the anti-air was built. The anti-air was built because the crow came in and was spotted early. Partly because of the fact that it was used to defend and attack, but partly because it wasn't just immediately pushed into the base to destroy the anti-air forces before they got big enough to stop it. Like, that's the thing when you're using a unit like a crow, or any really big unit that has a defense, that you, it has a clear defensive option to use against it. Go fast! You're not building it to try to secure territory, you're building it to win the game. That's the whole point of that unit, that's why you built it. So, because we didn't see that used to win the game, then we get the situation where now the game is being turned around, the Southwest team... I mean, they're not doing all that much damage, it's fleas, it's not gonna do much. But still, like, given, that gives the Southwest team a lot of room to play with. They did lose the Northeast exp or Northwest expansions, and the Northeast team has a bit more economy to work with. But the Southwest team, they are they have a Scorpion. They aren't spending money on Crows. They didn't lose that Crow, and all they need is a worker for the Reclaim, and they don't have it. Really? No one? No one no one going for this Reclaim? This is like 3,000 2, metal? Really? Okay. I mean, I really should be... I should, have I should temper my expectations at this point that it is not going to be a game with Reclaim. Even though... So much reclaim. So much reclaim on the map. But yeah, that that is a thing. If you ever see units die, reclaim them. It is extremely valuable. Oh wait, no, 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 there's a caretaker. Yes, we are getting reclaim. Hooray! Good job, Kakash. You've got a caretaker. We will have reclaim. So yeah, that is going to give the Southwest team a major equalizer. Not advantage yet. I mean, they're actually way behind us of economy thanks to having lost those metal extractors and also having lost them in the Southeast from these scythes coming in from Briley. Nice scythe play, actually. Riley's been doing quite well with the whole sneaky strategy, considering the rest of their team is able to hold them, or hold the defense for them. It's not a bad thing, all things considered. Actually, it's working out quite nicely. Of course, at this point, we do have enough of a force from Kakash to at least put a stop to that, but hey, the damage has been done. Southwest team is still slightly behind. And once the caretaker is done, that will help. That'll be 10 metal per second for the Southwest from this crow, and that'll be for a long time. Of course, this one caretaker is actually out of range. That is the one problem for it. It, it can't help. It can try, but it, it really can't help. It's just out of range, too. Like, look at that. Like, just, oops. just look at that. It is literally barely in range. It could be in range. But hey, still, Southwest is at least getting some reclaim. I cannot complain about that. The problem, however, for the Southwest team is that they still don't have as much territory. Northeast team is managing to secure the, north, the Northwest. And managing very slowly but surely push into the southeast. They haven't lost a whole lot of units in all these assaults. The Phantoms are doing a great job maintaining their attrition. And actually, the Northeast team, they've killed 7,000 more metal than the Southwest team. That's, considering, you know, 25 out of 25, yeah, that's... Sheesh, that's one and a half times as many units killed by the Northeast team as the Southwest team. That, that spread is basically enough. On top of the fact that the Northeast team has had an economic advantage for most of this game, even without using this reclaim up here have a convict right here. I mean, seriously, there's still like 1,400 metal there. But even without the reclaim being used, the Northeast team has had an economic advantage just for having broken in with that crow. That crow still got its value to an extent. I mean, it is getting eaten by the Southwest team, and that's keeping them in the game for now. But, hey, that gave the Northeast team loads of extra metal. That's still worth it. That's still worth something. It's not worth everything, but it's worth something. However, I do hope the next crow does manage to find a bit more traction, because at this point, the Northeast team is still starting to lose some units. They are still starting to deal with the fact that the Southwest team has an entrenched position that cannot be easily broken. 
Some attempts are being made. Briley coming in here with that with the Phantom and a couple Reavers to try to help, but the Reavers will not survive very long. The Sling will be torn to pieces. Honestly, the Scorchers, if they do come up here, are dead. But I'm not sure that's going to happen, though. It does feel like there is a bit more hesitance coming in here from the Northeast team, but at least they're pulling out the Southwest. That's the important thing. The Southwest is even more hesitant, and now the Southwest taking the bait, being pulled back, and that should be able to get rid of the Southwest ball. And with that, the Southwest entrenched position will likely fall soon afterwards. But the problem, of course, is it looks like it's not even going to matter. The, there's enough damage being dealt by the Southwest force that the Northeast force is forced back enough that Southeast Southwest force can set up its crab. Once it gets that going, this entire shield ball is done. Not to mention the fleas coming here to tear apart all the defenses that have been set up, or at least try. I mean, it's a valiant effort, I will grant them that. It's certainly not as effective as it could necessarily be, but it's it's a try. It's something. But yeah, enough artillery coming in here between them. Well, the Racketeer is just helping out, stun everything, get rid of the shields and the crab, getting rid of the units. That is still plenty, and revealing that scythe. Not soon enough to save the day, but still enough that there's knowledge of the scythes. Everyone knows they're there. However, at the same time, that entire reclaim field in the north center, or the center west, near that crow, has been taken. So, at least Greensprig could take it back. I mean, if they were actually going to reclaim it all in this game, which I don't think they will, but if they were, they have that crow they can reclaim. And at the same time, the southeast, southwest team, again, losing... Well, okay, they lost that crowd. They lost their, essentially, entrenched position. Like I said, if that shield ball went, the entrenched position will fall soon afterwards. But I think the northeast team, again, is going to be a bit more timid. And as a result, will not go for that southwest or southeast expansion quite yet. They will gradually do it, but it looks like the main focus is right now Green Squig in the north, the north or the west center, trying to secure this Crow Corpse. And at the very least, getting rid of that Crow, or getting that Crow Corpse to them means that now the Northeast team has a massive, like a threefold economic lead. The Crow Corpse was the main thing keeping the Southwest team in the game, and now with that dead and another Crow having been started and being built and on the way, there is actually a really good chance that this is going to be it. Northeast team will take it from here. Largely, it just comes down to tactics, because if we look at the amount of anti-air forces that are up for the Southwest team, it's not much. I think there's just these two tarantulas, actually. Uh, yeah, that's it. Two tarantulas, and the racket here trying to help a little bit. Not, I'm afraid, going to do the trick. So, with that, those Aegis just go down, and this entire expansion is done. Ever, the rest of Bradley's forces moving in here to help secure that, and that should be it. If Green Squid comes in and flanks along the western side, or the northern side rather, that should be enough. I mean, it's going to be a bit of a suicide mission if done, but hey, at the very least it keeps some of the heat off the crow. Of course, the crow will likely to be a bit concerned. There should be some anti-air defenses around here, I think. I didn't really notice much, though. No, there isn't. Nope. Nothing. It's actually totally open. I mean, there's lotuses. They do shoot up, but that's about it. So with that, Kakash throwing in the towel. This is basically it. This is, this is Southwest throwing in the towel piecemeal. But ultimately, the crow does manage to get in. I mean, that game, largely determined by two crows, which in turn was largely determined by the fact that there wasn't a whole lot of assault coming into the northeast base. The southwest team, they got a decent advantage early on, but didn't quite press it as well as they could have. Once, they, once JP Productions lost their commander, they lost all momentum. They never really tried to push back and never really tried to push in to secure or keep securing these expansions. And then from there, continue to contain and then push in or be sneaky or push around. I mean, one thing I noticed from the beginning is that Southwest didn't have any gunships or air, and we didn't see any switch to gunships or air. So there wasn't really an attempt to fight in the air, which was kind of odd because the money was there, the Southwest team could easily have afforded it, and the Northeast team didn't have much in the way of anti-air. So that choice was a little odd to me, and if they had gone, if the Southwest team had gone for that, then it would have been very possible to come in here and just start wrecking up the place. I mean, the Northeast, their entire base was not really all that big, and there was a lot of caretakers close up. Hitting the fusion reactor alone would have smashed basically all the production capacity of the entire base. You now, get a few, two or three ravens on that, and it's done. Actually, no, three ravens would be enough. Maybe four in case you're worried about anti-air, but there was none. There was one razor. That's not going to kill the... Well, actually, okay, if the ravens take, take a good path, that won't hit the ravens at all. Like, if, they go along, if they go along here, then they're fine. But yeah, that was, that was an interesting game. I mean, it was obviously a game with newer players, and that is how things go with newer players. It, you get more timid plays, you get more careful plays, you get generally an escalation to the late game units, because those are the things that, for newer players, feel comfortable. It feels like, this is a big, meaty unit, I can kill things with this. And it's like, yeah, you, you can. You can also kill things with this swarm of lighter units, if you play them well, but yeah, yeah given skill level, it kind of makes sense. You go for a big crow. It's, it's a flying strider. Yeah, I can see it. 
Anyway, next match is going to be considerably higher level. It is going to be a match between Kingstad and Gorda on Living Lands. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in just a few minutes.